Forgive me, Mr. Claus. I'm afraid I've made a terrible mess of your holiday. Bumpy sleigh ride? The Nightmare Before Christmas is undeniably a masterpiece that brings together a unique storyline, great humor, and an unforgettable list of songs. Today, we have a list of scenes from the stop-motion animated musical that we believe were not made for younger viewers. Setting things right, bringing joy and cheer wherever he goes. Yes, folks, Chris Kringle has... Tim Burton is undoubtedly one of the greatest to ever do it when it comes to writing and producing classic monster films. In Halloween Town, which is the setting of this movie, we see a very clear representation of both literary and film monsters in different scenes. The entire population of Halloween Town is something that would go over the heads of kids because they simply do not understand the backstories and, as a result, would not fully relate to the characters in the way that adult fans would. And nobody really understood? Well, how could they? Take a look at Dr. Finkelstein, for instance. In this movie, he is described as a pale mad scientist, but with a closer look, you can see that his character was a derivation of Dr. Victor Frankenstein. The scene with the black and orange striped snake references the black and white sandworms we saw in Tim Burton's earlier released movie, Beetlejuice. Similarly, scenes where other characters like the Wolfman, Igor, Mr. Hyde, Mummy Boy was to bring them something great. Why does nothing ever turn out like it should? And even the vampires are all classic monster references. Just name a monster and you will see they are probably already living in Halloween Town. Now, if you set the characters of the movie aside, there are so many other scenes and situations that kids cannot relate to. They watch them, even laugh at them, but remain completely oblivious to the meaning and the message behind those scenes. Oh, to be young again. Set things right. Sandy Claus. The most obvious is the midlife crisis that the protagonist is facing. Jack Skellington saw himself stuck in a rut as he had been the Pumpkin King for far too long. He is clearly bored of his life and is very quick to get obsessed with the idea of taking on a new role. Naturally, since kids have not gotten to the point where they feel overwhelmed or stagnant in life, Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Oh, I'm feeling weak. They would describe Jack's actions as a search for adventure, as opposed to what it really is, coming to terms with an existential crisis and dealing with it in the most destructive ways possible. Sadly, these real-life emotions and consequent misguided actions are something a lot of adults can relate to. Remember when the mayor went to see Jack concerning the plans for Halloween and Jack's silence rattled him? Yeah, we guarantee that the realism in that scene is not one for kids. Looks like I won the jackpot! Bye-bye, doll face! Children find this character to be a funny and very confused person in power. What they would not comprehend is that the mayor is two-faced in more ways than one. At different point in the movie, he presents a smiling face to the public, but has a terrified expression on the other side of his head. The conceit tells adult viewers that the mayor is performing for the public while hiding his fears, and lack of trust in himself to run the town and carry out his responsibilities efficiently. It's time to sound the alarms! The character even goes so far as to say, Jack, please, I'm only an elected official here. I can't make these decisions by myself. As adults, we can see and understand that this incompetence is also quite scary, though. Funny to watch. On this note, we must mention Sally in every scene where she does too much in an attempt to show her affection to Jack, the Pumpkin King. What's wrong? I thought you liked frog's breath. Nothing's more suspicious than frog's breath. Sally kept going over and beyond, throwing herself out of a window, stalking him through a graveyard, falling asleep outside his house, and even poisoned her father slash maker. These are all questionable acts and classic signs of obsession, but of course, not one that kids would pick up on. Children would recognize this budding relationship between Sally and Jack that played out in different scenes, and you might be surprised that some would even root for them. They see a character who constantly proves her love to someone else, but they would not realize that she is giving a little too much in the process, all for someone who is too occupied to think of anything else. They might also not understand that Jack was not being malicious towards Sally. Jack's one-track mind and oblivious nature made the entire relationship one-sided until the very end. Three times. You're mine, you know. I made you with my own. Naturally, children would be delighted with the happily ever after moment at the end, where Jack and Sally kiss at the top of Spiral Hill. However, with the experience that comes with age, one would hope for Sally's sake that Jack has actually learned and grown from his mistakes. Children, on the other hand, have no such concerns. This is all assuming that Sally was a well-grounded person herself, but that is actually not the case. It is very normal that a child would laugh at all the problematic things Sally did for Jack, but as adults, we know better. I know. Come on into the lab and we'll get you all fixed up. Another mature scene in this movie is when Oogie Boogie delights us with the casino experience. Child viewers would obviously not know much about how roulette wheels work, killer cards, and slot machines. At some point, Oogie Boogie rolls a dice and yells, Snake Eyes! We assure you that the only value children would get from that scene is that the snake comes out of the dice. And one more thing. 
Leave that no account oogie boogie out of this! As adults, we can appreciate what the role and the subsequent role that reads 11 means from a gambling perspective. There are other interesting scenes from Oogie Boogie's lair, and if you are not too carried away, you will realize that in a town full of monsters, the most feared of them all lives in a miniature gambling world with high stakes that serve nobody but himself. Yes, we will not forget the scene where Oogie Boogie turns into a sack that is full of disgusting worms everywhere. Oh, you think something's missing, but... Ow! Sorry! You're right! Something is mis- The scene is disturbing at best, and we can assume that children will find it even more. The scene where Jack is shot while attempting to spread Christmas cheer throughout Halloween Town brings Jack to a full circle point, and this is the first time we see a crack in his resolve to outrightly steal and appropriate something he had no knowledge of. After introspection, Jack seeks the help of Santa, who he had kidnapped earlier. Although Jack still intends to steal the holiday after the brief interaction- I've got the beard, the coat, the boots, the Jack, belt- Jack! This time he's bagged him! We still see a glimmer of acceptable practice when it comes to cultural exchange. To children, this scene is most likely just another point on the protagonist's just journey of discovery. However, the underlying message that one should always seek first-hand knowledge rather than blundering your way through a specific practice is just one of the many things that would elude child viewers. Younger viewers might not appreciate most of these scenes the way we do, but we know that the nuance will eventually stick as they grow older. Think of us as you soar triumphantly through the sky, outshining every star. There is also this brilliant scene where Jack removes his head and holds it out on his hand. If you are a fan of Shakespeare, then you most likely caught the reference. For those who did not, this scene was a kind of subtle reference to Hamlet, where the prince holds out a skull while soliloquizing to be or not to be. Well, if you missed it, imagine how the kids would feel. Perfectly marvelous. Curiosity killed the cat, you know. Now, these are just the scenes that children cannot relate to. There are also quite a few scary scenes that would make them uncomfortable, to say the least. The scene where the dead children are plotting to kidnap Santa and do macabre things like chopping him into bits and boiling him alive. Not every parent would want their children to watch a scene like that. Just like there will always be arguments as to whether this classic is a Halloween or Christmas movie, there will also be the case of whether or not this is a children's movie. Yes, The Nightmare Before Christmas is rated 7 and up. My, what a brilliant nose you have the better to light my way. And based on the lack of bad language and sexual content, we would say rightly so. But since the movie still delivers some violence and gore, there are quite a number of parents who disagree with the age rating of the movie. And goodwill toward men? No! <laughs> Whatever your stance may be, it does not take anything away from the fact that The Nightmare Before Christmas entertains its viewers, which is what it was created to do. For adults, it is a good watch, and one can appreciate the brilliance that went into three years of producing the stop-motion animation, while for kids, it is just an entertaining fantasy that celebrates two of their favorite holidays. Never says a word. Hope he hasn't died. Something's up with Jack. Something's up with Jack. Thank you for watching this video and sticking with us till the end. Do like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel as well and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thank you once again. There's an empty place in my bones.